Thanks for joining us for CBN News Watch. I'm Mark Martin. Coming up, President Biden finally breaks his silence over those recent unidentified flying objects. Plus, Nikki Haley is running for the 2024 presidency and calling for a new generation of leadership. Elected officials should come, do their job, and leave and let fresh blood come in. That hasn't happened. And so we have to have term limits in Congress. See more of her interview as she covers topics from abortion to the war in Ukraine. Then later, we give you a look at some exciting new films sure to inspire your faith. It's part of this week's top five trending stories in the world of entertainment. All these stories and more are coming up next from the CBN Newsroom. This is CBN News Watch. We begin with President Biden breaking his silence over those three unidentified objects shot down by U.S. fighter jets. He says they were not a national security threat. Still, though, many questions remain, including where these objects came from and who they belong to. CBN's Jenna Browder brings us our top story from Washington. In addition to not being a national security threat, President Biden says these unidentified objects are not related to the Chinese spy balloon and were shot down out of an abundance of caution. We don't yet know exactly what these three objects were, but nothing, nothing right now suggests they were related to China's spy balloon program. These three objects were most likely balloons tied to private companies recreation or research institutions. The three objects were detected after NORAD recalibrated its radar to detect smaller objects. It's still unclear though where they came from. One might have belonged to a hobby club. Aviation Week reports the Northern Illinois Bottle Cap Balloon Brigade estimates their balloon was flying over the Yukon Territory the same day the U.S. military shot down an object at the same altitude and same general area. In the future, Biden says he wants clear rules for situations with unidentified objects in the sky. I've directed my team to come back to me with sharper rules for how we will deal with these unidentified objects moving forward, distinguishing, distinguishing between those that are likely to pose safety and security risks that necessitate action and those that do not. His comments coming after lawmakers from both parties pressured the administration for more transparency and call for tougher action with China over its spy balloon. We ought to be much more forceful than we have been with the Chinese government. We ought to be saying to them that this is espionage on our soil, this is a deliberate act by them. On the one hand, the administration is saying we don't yet know what these last three objects are and we don't want to characterize until we recover them. But on the other hand, it wasn't a threat. Both of those things can't be true. So that's why it's urgent that President Biden resolve these contradictions. President Biden's comments did little to satisfy his critics as Capitol Hill is hoping for a more coherent policy in the days ahead. In Washington, Jenna Browder, CBN News. In other news, there are new alarm bells over the debt limit. The Congressional Budget Office warning the U.S. is in danger of hitting a catastrophic default between July and September if Congress doesn't make a deal on the debt ceiling. The new timetable estimates the government could add nearly $19 trillion in new debt over the next decade if it stays on course. Recovery efforts following Turkey's massive earthquakes are underway, and each day new issues arise. CBN Middle East Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell is on the ground there and explains how the widespread infrastructure damage has created a great need for medical help. As nations worldwide send help and supplies into Turkey, Syria's President Assad has opened his country's borders for the first time in years, so aid can reach those areas also devastated by the earthquakes. One of the major needs in this area is medical help. The local hospital was destroyed and many people lost their prescriptions and medicine during the earthquake. That's where Operation Blessings medical team comes in. All this is good except this part. Operation Blessing Dr. Gustavo Angel is providing assessments for some in this area. For now, people are like in need of their med the treatments for the chronic diseases because at the moment they don't have any clinics or any hospitals nearby. They had to travel like at least one hour and a half from this place to the nearest clinic. This 84-year-old man suffers from diabetes, high blood pressure, and a heart condition. His son described to us what they endured when the earthquake hit. We try to keep him from falling down, and this earthquake affected him a lot because this is the first time in a disaster like this. I took him out of my back, 
and he fell down and he couldn't walk. Reliving that night proved emotionally overwhelming. The emotional aftershock is also affecting this 70-year-old survivor. They had lost everything right now. So they're living on the street, on a tent camp. So the weather, like the fear and everything has generated a, a spasm on his muscles. So he has like an aftershock um, uh, anxiety. This son is grateful for the help. We didn't expect to get this much help at the earthquake. So not only these people who are helping us and from other organizations. To meet the need here, Operation Blessing is working to expand its medical outreach. Right now, Operation Blessing is trying to improve the, the health situation over here. We're trying to give like a mobile clinic from this area so we can go visit places or at least the people that are nearby can approach to us and we can help them because we know that they are in need. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Hatay, Turkey. Operation Blessing doing a wonderful job. Well, coming up, we sit down with Nikki Haley to talk about her run for the 2024 presidency and why she is calling for a new generation of leadership. Stay with us. Welcome back to News Watch. She's running for president and calling for a new generation of leadership. Nikki Haley is also taking a strong stand for historic American values, her Christian faith, and supporting the nation of Israel. CBN's David Brody spoke with Haley about those subjects and everything from abortion to the war in Ukraine. Here's a look at their conversation. I am running for president of the United States in front of a packed house in Charleston, Nikki Haley came out swinging. America is not past our prime. It's just that our politicians are past theirs. Afterward, we sat down with the new presidential candidate who's preaching a message of generational change. Elected officials should come, do their job, and leave and let fresh blood come in. Mm -hmm. That hasn't happened. And so we have to have term limits in Congress. That mantra also means running against former President Trump. You had said at one point, obviously, that you would uh, not run if he did. David, we have lost the last seven out of eight popular votes for president. I think it's time for a new generation. I think it's time for someone who can speak that in a way that we bring more people in. Mm -hmm. And I think it's time that we focus on the fact that we can't keep talking about old issues and the status quo. In order to make it past Trump or anyone else for that matter, the former UN ambassador and South Carolina governor will need support from the evangelical voting bloc. And she's making a case on abortion, saying it's time to pursue certain limits now that the high court has overturned Roe. They can have the debate on whether that means 15 weeks or, or 10 weeks or six weeks. Mm -hmm. But let's, de let's at least start with the fact that we don't think that abortions up until the time of birth is acceptable. And let's accept the fact that we do want to save as many babies as possible and then go from there. What is the pitch specifically to, to those key primary voters, the evangelicals? So the first thing I'll tell you, there's no pitch. I am a person that every day walks with my faith on my shoulders and knows that I can't get through a day without God. And so yeah. I don't need to pitch anyone. I think they see it. I think they feel it. I think they know who mm -hmm. I am. After growing up in the Sikh faith, Haley converted to Christianity and her announcement speech included an evangelical flavor. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for God will be with you wherever you go. Plus a prominent pro-Israel evangelical pastor delivered the opening prayer the senior pastor of Cornerstone Church, John Hagee. He is loved in Israel. He's loved in America. That represents a lot about what you are about, God, Israel, and, and the Judeo-Christian fabric of this yes. country. Is, is that the way yes, you see it? Yes, and we don't need to go away from that. We need to dig deep. Huh. We need to pull into that. Double down, if you will. Absolutely, and that's why I wanted him to be here, because I knew he'd set the tone like nobody else. Haley says the tone set by Joe Biden is a morally dark one, especially when it comes to indoctrinating children on gender ideology. Many evangelicals see this as a spiritual battle of what's taking place in our country today. Spiritual warfare, if you It will. absolutely is spiritual warfare. This is about parents and children and their church. 
And all of those issues need to be decided at home. They don't need to be talked about in schools. They don't need to be spread mm -hmm. here. I mean, all of this wokeism is trying to change the core of what the family is. It's a very different America from yesteryear, something Haley would like to recapture. The biggest crisis yeah. I see is the national self-loathing that has taken over our country. Mm -hmm. I mean, the media has really gotten to where they've told Americans, our country is bad, our country is racist, our country is rotten to the core, and that's just not true. Haley's candidacy comes at a time when the current GOP power players want an America first agenda that steps back from funding wars like the one between Russia and Ukraine. I don't think we need to put troops on the ground. I don't think we need to write them blank checks, but they have the passion to fight for their own freedom. Give them the ammunition to do it. If they lose this fight, mm -hmm. Russia's not gonna stop at Ukraine. They're gonna go into Poland and the Baltics and we've got a world war on our hands. Right now, Haley faces a different kind of battle and takes the field without ever having lost an election. May the best woman win. Nikki Haley will now move from her home state here in South Carolina to the early primary states of New Hampshire and Iowa later this week. It's a key time for Haley because other than Trump, she pretty much will have the stage all to herself trying to convince voters that she's the one they need to choose and that GOP primary field is going to get very crowded very quickly. David Brody, CBN News, Charleston, South Carolina. Still ahead, we take a look at the top five trending stories in entertainment, including a new film from the Kendrick Brothers and a film based on one of the greatest spiritual awakenings in American history. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. Highlights from Super Bowl 57, plus exciting new films to share that are sure to inspire your faith. Here's that from Graham with this week's top five trending stories in the world of entertainment. At number five, Kansas City Chiefs have won Super Bowl 57. Highlights from this year's big game. I wish I'd make it easier and not be down, but I feel like I play better when we are down. And like every Super Bowl, the night full of tradition and tribute. The medical workers who helped save the life of Buffalo Bills player Jamar Hamlin honored. I'm doing great. Every morning, I just, uh, every morning, every night, you know, I, I take 10 deep breaths to myself. Um, and it, it, it puts everything in perspective for me. And speaking of perspective, millions upon millions tune into the Super Bowl every year. For many, commercials are the main draw. Got no way to prove it, so maybe I'm lying. Super Bowl Sunday ads about Jesus spark Monday morning conversations. We saw ads about gambling, alcohol, and Jesus, right? So there was a Christianity campaign promoting Jesus that cost around $20 million dollars. Has there ever been a Jesus commercial in the Super Bowl? So there's never been a Jesus ad. Jesus is in a bit of a rebrand right now. How did those ads go over? Because I'm thinking, who could be upset about that? So from a creative message, I think they were powerful. They went over really well. At number four. Hey, I'm Alex Kendrick. And I'm Stephen Kendrick. And we have some exciting news for you. The movie-making brothers behind War Room, Courageous and Overcomer, continue their 17-year partnership with Sony Pictures, for their next big screen project. Announcing production begins this summer for an August 2024 release. When things get bad, when I get down. Auditions, the movie title, and plot details are being kept under wraps. One of the greatest joys of any filmmaking process is the new friendships that develop. And we're laughing together, we're working together, we're crying and praying together. At number three. But in that tent, there's hope and unity and miracles that I can't even explain. A final preview of Jesus Revolution, a film inspired by one of the greatest spiritual awakenings in American history. I'd like you to meet my new friend, Lonnie Frisbee, and some of his friends. Welcome. It's in theaters across the country next weekend. There's this church. It's called Calvary Chapel. When we say we're looking for truth, what if this is true? At number two. When we rolled into town, people like fascinated by us making this movie in a small town with real people. Corbin Bernson's 2010 film about a minister and his midlife crisis of faith. I love you and I honor you and I respect you. 
no less than the day I came to know you. But if you can't be here with me, then I have no choice but to walk away. Has produced a 2023 docu-series about the actor's own personal journey. This is the test, what faith really is about. The six-episode series is available on the Pure Flix streaming platform. Tell me about um, Journey of Faith. How did this all come about? My father passed away about 15 years ago. I, uh, I, I started my, really started my journey of faith, um, you know, asking bigger questions. I'd already passed, of course, a flood of bigger questions come, come into mind. And uh, you're sitting with a bag of ashes, and you go, oh, my gosh, is that... Where's the guy who was the little league coach? You know, the phone rings. Hi, sorry to inform you, your father's just passed away. He's gone. Where is he? I was keenly aware of I'm next time I'm on deck. Reader's Digest, you know that big. Yeah, like that big. I haven't seen that. Cameras roll on him as he asks the hard questions of himself and his faith. We made the film and just you can only describe it as miracle after miracle happening. You know, it's all miracles and wonderful things happened. It's just God became so evident mm. in this to me. And my faith was reestablished. My faith in it. At number one. It's catching up with an old friend. Nothing too heavy, just checking me. Melodic news from actress and new children's author Chrissy Metz. Bradley and I have written a children's album to accompany our book, When I Talk to God, I Talk About You. The album is titled Prayed for This Day. Now life will never be the same. I prayed for this day. We've got some music to go along with this book. Tell me when did that, when you make when did you make that decision? What can we look forward to? Well, we surprised ourselves because <laughs> we were not we were not planning it, but when I did the audiobook, there was some music that we, you know, goes in and out of the, the in and outro. And Bradley and I were like, why don't we maybe do an instrumental so it feels cohesive and it feels tonally right? And then we just started writing songs. And for us, it, it completes the thought that the book started, the album does. So, you know, there, there's a plan for everybody. And um, it's designed to, you know, you read the, the book to your child at night, then you send them off to, off to bed to the, the lullaby album. Chrissy sounds fantastic on it. She sings all 11 songs on it. I'm thankful I'm forever changed. I prayed for this day. Some great stories there. Well, coming up, God is moving in a major way at Asbury University. We take you to the big revival next. A revival at Asbury University is now in its 10th day as thousands of people continue to make the spiritual pilgrimage to Wilmore, Kentucky in hopes of encountering more of God. Wendy Griffith is there. This revival is officially in overflow mode. Look at this line behind me, about a half a mile long. Folks from all over the country waiting patiently to get into Hughes Auditorium here at Asbury University to experience this historic revival for themselves. God is here. God is here and he's working right now. Come get you some. You hear me? Well, that's exactly. I was like, 29-year-old Joa Perez drove all the way from Florida to ask God a simple question. I came here and I'm like, Lord, if you want me to go back to preaching, if you want me to plant this church that I've had in my heart and for years to plant, I need someone to prophesy over me right now. Joe's prayer was answered when he ran into a well-known local preacher. He prays over me and he literally just declares what I've been praying for years over my life. And I thought that was insane. Yeah. Regent University. Yeah. Jeff Gossman with Regent University drove 10 hours from Virginia Beach after hearing about what God is doing here. Well, everybody at Regent right now, including all the executive vice presidents, they're all crying out for revival. You know, they're having extra prayer services over there right now. They, they want the presence of the Lord on campus. And, um, and so we're just so thankful that they sent us here 
you know, to just get whatever we can to bring back. On Thursday, the persistent rains did not dampen spirits for those waiting to get inside. You know, uh, when I was saved, I got the Holy Spirit, but always looking for more and really hoping when I walk through the doors, it's poured out on me. 21-year-old student body president Allison Perfader was there when revival broke out. Um, because you just didn't want to leave. It's not that anyone was saying, oh, let's see how long we can last. Let's see how, you know, like we just didn't want to go. And I, I mean, I had, I had came in, I had a lot of like anger issues. I like really struggled with my anger and I was able to talk with like God first. And it's just like that never would have happened like on my own time. It's been just a really hard couple of years. And not just for me, but like a lot of my friends. And I just felt like the Lord was releasing me of a lot of bitterness and anger that I'd had just about all kinds of stuff, even some of it towards God. And so I would say for me personally, the biggest word I can use has been a very, very healing experience yeah. for me. So how do you explain what's happening here at Asbury? I would just say there is a tangible presence of God's peace, joy, and a freedom to worship and adore the one true God. Wendy Griffith, CBN News, Wilmore, Kentucky. What a wonderful way to end the show. God is definitely on the move. Well, that's it for this edition of CBN News Watch. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.